It's food and wine. Rainbow edition. Ooh. Hey there, Man Fam! It is officially the first festival of 2024, Festival of the Arts. We will be at Epcot for the next few days exploring everything this festival has to offer, from the performance arts to the chalk characters to all the delicious food. So grab your passports and let's go. Epcot's International Festival of the Arts kicked off on January 12th and runs through February 19th. This is the newest of the Epcot festivals and it really has become such a fan favorite because there is so much to do and see and eat. It celebrates three different kinds of art, the culinary arts with the food kitchens, the performance arts with things like Broadway performers here, and the visual arts with things like being able to purchase Disney artwork around World Showcase. Super excited to check it out and see what is new and exciting at the festival this year. There's a bowl of cheese calling my name. As with any festival at Epcot, make sure you grab a passport when you walk in. And this one's especially cool because there's a figment flip book in the corner. So make sure you look at that. But this is going to have all your menu guides as well as your wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. So once you've got your passport, you are ready to jump in. And like always, we have polled the MAM fam and set our budget for $200 in total today or $100 per person. So we've got our fancy gift cards ready to go. Now we may cheat on the budget just a little bit because technically we do have a third person with us again. Mama Mammoth has joined us. My mom. So she's never been to Festival of the Arts. So excited to bring her with us. But she will be off camera, but here eating with us. When picking up our gift cards, we also took note of Figment's Brush with the Masters, which is the scavenger hunt for this event. And I love the scavenger hunts. They're $9.99 plus tax. You can use discounts on them, though. You can get them at pretty much any of the Disney merchandise shops. So Creations, Front of the Park shops, International Gateway shop. Uh, and then they're going to encourage you, your kids, to go in through Outworld Showcase and find famous works of art, but Figment is in them. Once you find them all, you can bring them back to one of those locations and get a prize, which this year are these really cute character figurines that you can paint. Now, as a pro tip, the figment one does tend to run out. So if you really want the figment one, I would actually pick it up when you're getting your scavenger hunt. They'll hand it to you right then and you can still play. A little, little less exciting than actually completing it. But I think these are such a cute activity and a great way to have kids explore more throughout the pavilions uh, while you're enjoying your eating and drinking around the festival. Is it just me or is figment giving me bedroom eyes? He looks... Like he's had a couple cognacs and he'd like to talk. It's spinning a little bit outside, so we're taking a detour into Creations to check out the merchandise first. And let me tell you, friends, if you are a fan of Figment, this is the festival for you. We have Figment Mug, Figment Corksicle, Fig Claire Figment Munchling, Figment Pencil Holder, Figment T-shirt, Figment Plush, Figment Spirit Jersey. Here's the front, more Figment. Figment Ornament, different Figment T-shirt, Yet another Figment t-shirt, pass holder special. Reversible Figment keychain, Figment pen. Mickey, what are you doing here? Phew, that's better. Back to Figment, pass holder pen. And that's been your 2024 Festival of the Arts merchandise roundup, starring Figment. In route to our first booth, but are taking a moment to take in some of the absolutely spectacular art on display here. One of the parts that makes this festival so special is the fact that you get to see so much of the beautiful art showcased, and in some instances even meet some of the creators of that art who are out here actually painting in real time. Hey pal, jealous of your setup right now. But also, why are you wearing both two swimsuits and a tiki skirt? You know what? No shade. Well done, Goof. Uh, but the starfish, though, is throwing some shade. Maybe he just wants the banana. Maybe Goofy isn't sharing his coconut drink with him. How dare you? Look at these tables. This is incredible. Beauty and the Beast, all of the characters. Oh my gosh. These are amazing. Snow White and the Seven Doors. Well, amazingly, the Seven Doors on the way to work. These are gorgeous. Hey, villains. We're gonna breeze past this and we're gonna focus our attention here. Come in your most lugubriousness. Also Peter Pan, look at this. The Jolly Roger, the, the skyscape changing from London to Neverland. Poor Nana. <laughs> Poor Nana for father. Oh my God, you're right, the skyscraper. I was too distracted by Nana. That is so cool. TikTok croc. Just stopped by Cuisine Classique for our first round near Test Track, and we have gotten the Beef Wellington and the Sum of All Colors IPA, which is startlingly black for a colorful name. The Beef Wellington has a mushroom and duxelle, prosciutto, and puff pastry with a red wine demi-glaze. 
Oh wow, that's very tender. I'm gonna try to get a bite of everything here. Mm. That demi glaze is everything. The dish itself is incredibly rich and robust. The meat itself, really tender and moist. The puff pastry, nice and crispy on the outside. Slight taste of the mushrooms. You're not gonna get a whole lot of the, that sort of earthy flavor from the mushrooms, but what I'm really enjoying is the demi glaze, which is acidic, has that nice beef flavor. I think altogether, this is just a, a solid dish. And with those mashed potatoes, they might go on best of the fest. Whoa, okay. Cheers. That is not for me. Um, I love IPAs, but I like hazy or fruity IPAs, and this is a very heavy, thick IPA. In fact, I'm not sure if it's actually the Sum of All Colors IPA, because in the guidebook it says it's a different dark IPA, which I'm believing. Um, I'm looking forward to trying some of the more lighter beers throughout the festival, but that one would not be for me. But I'm getting a nod from behind the camera that maybe if you are a hoppy IPA drinker, you'll enjoy this one. Headed into World Showcase now. We are skipping the deconstructed dish booth, which is right outside of Test Track. They have basically the same menu as years past, not a favorite of ours, and since we are trying to ball on a budget, that is a skip. However, if you do want to enjoy something there and you like key lime pie, maybe perhaps enjoy the deconstructed key lime pie. But we've got our eyes on some other desserts. One of my favorite little things at this festival are these frames that allow you to put yourself into famous works of art. And it looks like they added Disney movies movies this year so you can put yourself into Mary Poppins or Sleeping Beauty or Wish. These are so cute! There's also kids chalk art if you've got little ones that want to leave their mark on the festival right outside here of the chalk art where these artists do incredible, incredible chalk drawings that are literally blow your mind. And one of my favorite things about the festival, we will be pointing some out as we go, is the chalk full of character walk basically throughout Epcot, mostly in World Showcase, in the different pavilions, there are chalk drawings of different Disney characters. So you might see Remy and Emile in France, you might see Dante in Mexico, and it's a cute kind of like bonus free scavenger hunt. One of my favorite things about this festival. We have made it to Pop Eats, which is historically one of the best booths because it's grilled cheese and tomato soup, and who doesn't want to eat that? Now there are two different grilled cheeses. We actually only had one on our list, but we are people of science, and science integrity tells us that we need to try both to give both a fair uh, review view not only for you but to judge against each other we, you know we have a lot of integrity and um that's why i'm eating two sandwiches not because i'm hungry anyway so this is a plain grilled cheese with tomato soup in a cute little can this is the fancy grilled cheese it's got pimento cheese on it bacon and a fried green tomato and your tomato soup and this is a hazy ipa this was also our first stop on the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine which is the food scavenger hunt if you will of this festival basically if you eat five of these items. It can be any five. It can be all five of the same item or five different things. You can do it over multiple days. Once you complete all of the stamps, you can get a completer, which is some kind of treat. That's right. You get rewarded for eating by eating some more. Technically, we could have gotten two stamps for both grilled cheeses, but I told them to just give me one because we've got some other things on the list and I want to fill out all the colors. But enough talking. It's time to eat. First, I will try both sandwiches without the soup. It is a grilled cheese. Mm-hmm. It's a good grilled cheese. Buttery bread, lots of cheese. And it's being grilled right there to your right. Yeah, it's being grilled on stage over there. Standard, but delicious grilled cheese. Now for the fancy one. Yeah. Obviously, this one's better. It has pimento cheese, which actually has a little bit of heat. It's got a crispiness and a saltiness from the fried green tomato. A little bit of salty and fat from the bacon, too. Bacon makes everything better. No soup. This is definitely the better grilled cheese. Double dip, well executed, well done. Mm. Good tomato soup, natural sweetness, but not overly salty, really flavorful. That's just good comfort food right there. But yet again, the sandwich is better. So, if you're a vegetarian, don't eat pork, then yeah, it's a good classic grilled cheese. This one, however, is a little something special. Unsurprisingly, Molly's first entry to Best of the Fest. As a part of the unexpected additions from Pop Eats, we have the Hazy IPA. I'm not mad about it. Oh, it's a lot lighter than I expected it to be. 
So I expect most hazy IPAs to be really unfiltered. That doesn't actually look super unfiltered, but it is very light, very crisp. More citrus than pine notes on that. Um, actually, surprisingly for an IPA, a little bit of honey. And we're getting approval all across the board. Ah, yeah, this is good, even for non-IPA drinkers. We are skipping Refreshment Port. We've had the poutine in the past and it's good, but it's also not changed on the menu. Where we are headed next is to Gourmet Landscapes. Just stopped by Gourmet Landscapes and picked up the Verju roasted beets with goat cheese, petite lettuce, a blackberry gastrique, and spiced pecans. Now they also have a roasted bone marrow on their menu that did look interesting, as well as a wild mushroom risotto, which this year is plant-based. But we went for the beets because it is on the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. Say that five times fast. Now I'm gonna try to get a little bit of everything in here. We'll see how this goes. Oh, that's a fantastic, I believe that color to be a reddish purple. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's getting all of the things here. That's cheese, mushroom, pecan, and beet. You're covering a lot of different flavors at once. That is earthy from the beet, spicy and nutty from the pecan. You have an additional layer of like the umami from the mushroom and then the goat cheese, which I think is spectacular. Comes in there with a little bit of that goat cheese funk, for lack of a better word, in a good way. I enjoy this dish, but I don't think it's, it's a dish for everybody. Uh, there's just a lot happening, a lot of different textures and flavors going on that could be a lot to unpack. If you are an adventurous eater and want to explore, I do recommend it. But honestly, if you're an adventurous eater, I also recommend getting the bone marrow, which we had last year, and it was spectacular. So. I think this is tasty, but I also know that it's not for everybody. Look, we found our first chalk character. It's sweet little Coda from Brother Bear with a fish. Okay, well, some of the new chalk additions are just incredible and deep, just the deepest of deep cuts. So right up here, we have the great mouse detective represented. So you'll see Basil calling after Radigan and his world's greatest criminal mind, the limp as it sort of moves off to the gardens of the UK. But across the way is where I want to stop because these are some of my favorite characters represented and I can't wait to show you. And we're losing Molly. Hot pursuit. It's like the slowest chase known to man. We are briskly walking, the slowest walk chase known to man. <clears throat> I hesitate to ask, but whom are we searching for? They used to have the dog from Alice in Wonderland, that's a brush, a broom, in here. Well, while Molly searches for our dog-like friend, here we have Merlin as Squirrel from The Sword and the Stone while he's teaching Arthur lessons. Here is Arthur meeting a uh, squirrel who absolutely adores Arthur, but Arthur does not return her sentiments whatsoever, much to her chagrin later. Uh, and then along the same line, we have other squirrel who absolutely adores Merlin and Merlin rebuffs her angrily and then she gets mad and it's a whole to do. That results in Arthur almost being eaten by a wolf that is very underfed. But that's neither here nor there. I'm just happy to see the Sword and the Stone represented. Even if it is a bit of an obscure reference with them as squirrels, did you find it? No. But I did find Peter Pan's shadow. Oh! I just love the little details of this festival. Like some of the meet and greet characters will have a hand painted drawing next to them. So Alice made this one. I love that in some of the garden displays, it looks like the paint has spilled and the color of the paint is the paint color of the flowers right there. I just think this festival has a lot to look around at when you're enjoying yourself. Made it into France and have happened upon the drunk goose Uncle Waldo and Abigail and Amelia. These geese are from the Aristocats and they are adorable. They're so cute. I love that they keep adding new characters. Let's go find more. We have also happened upon Remy and Emil here enjoying a snack of some unidentified food and or garbage. It's really hard to tell with Emil. It looks like he's eating cheese. I oh. am Emil. Emil is me. <laughs> okay, we are back for day two of Festival of the Arts after a unexpected early stop due to a uh, medical whoopsie daisy yesterday. Some people would call it an emergency, but I like that you're calling it a whoopsie daisy. <laughs> but in any case, we're all good and getting back to it first and foremost before we get back to eating, we've got some painting to do. We've made it to the expression section, say that five times fast, right across from the Imagination Pavilion, which is where you get to help paint a mural throughout Festival of the Arts. Totally free, 11 to 5, come and join the fun. 
I always look forward to this at Festival of the Arts. I do think this is probably the best festival if you've got kids because there's more interactive things to do. Like we were showing the chakra yesterday, the expression section, there's the characters and the scavenger hunt. Uh, I wonder which one we're painting because there's four different paintings and they have them all hanging, murals on the wall there. And throughout the festival, four different paintings will get completed. And you just come here, the cast members will give you some paint and a brush. Seven. What is seven? It's like a nice kind of lighter yellow color. It's kind of the same color of the plastic cheese you ate with that pretzel. So in a color that occurs frequently in nature, I see. Yes. I have gray. Really? It's kind of a grayish blue. I was gonna say it was blue, but it's a little it's a it's a little grayish blue. Okay. So now we're gonna go look for our numbers and we get to paint five squares of our number. Five's here too. No, Alan, she told you to get as ah, tall as possible. Ah, okay. The nice cast member asked Alan if he would give up his yellow to get the tallest color so that he can help with the top of the mural. More than happy to. No, taller, Alan, you could be taller. Well, we, I already started this one. You got, uh, what else? Uh, you got five, five is a lot. Seven, seven is gonna need to help me. I now go tall. Four. I painted my five. Four of the five are very tall. All right, you're up. Be tall. Be tall. She needs one. Well done. Those are five, right? That is five, yeah. I'm not so good at staying in the line, so this is actually great for me. Let's try the top one. Thank you, sir. Well done. Feel accomplished. I love the expression section and you get a bookmark of whatever mural you're working on. And uh, we asked a sweet cast member, Kim, who told us that the murals get hung up like in cast buildings and things around the Orlando area. So that's really cool. Very cool. Your artwork goes somewhere. And now I'm hungry. Yes. Got distracted because I spotted some of Dom Corona's art. He is a Disney artist that often does stuff at the Four Seasons and I just love his colors. Like look at these fun colors in these Mickey and Scrooge art. I just think he does such a good job. And one thing I love about the Festival of the Arts is that you can buy original stuff if you want to spend $4,000 on this. I'm jealous because I love it. But um, they also often sell prints, sometimes even smaller than this. They'll often do postcards. So if you love a piece of art, you can get yourself a print, which is a much uh, better take home or even a little postcard, which is usually a couple dollars. And it's a really fun and unique souvenir. A kind cast member just let us know that this would be $49.95, which is obviously a much different price than $4,000. And it's, I just love getting original art because um, it's, it's just a really cool, different souvenir. For our first feeding of the day, we did a little bit of a double duty situation. I picked up our food and beverage from the Craftsman Courtyard while Molly picked up hers from Deco Delights. From the Craftsman Courtyard, we picked up the grilled pork belly with salsa verde and the grilled marinated skirt steak sandwich along with the coffee old-fashioned cocktail. And from Deco Delights, we picked up the Neapolitan Dessert Trio, which is a part of the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine, as well as the beer flight. I will be sampling the grilled marinated skirt steak with caramelized onions and mushrooms, blue cheese fondue, and arugula on a grilled French roll. I'm very excited. Gotta be honest, I don't know how I'm gonna go about this in a not messy way. Wow, this looks good. Okay, here we go. I want everything in one bite. So we might do like this from the middle, which I understand is a cardinal sin, but I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. The only thing I wish is that I had more of the steak. Marinated incredibly well, tender, not dried out. The acidity and sweetness from the balsamic glaze. Blue cheese, cuts in with a little bit of that funky blue cheese fondue. Ooh boy. Yeah, that's gonna be on one of my best of the fest. Again, my only feedback, I wish we had more of the steak, but yeah. I'm digging into this grilled pork belly, which is topped with salsa verde, broccoli rabe, pickled peppers and raclette cheese on grilled sourdough. And I actually saw the chef out there grilling the sourdough with the wheel of meat spinning. I am very excited. I'm not really sure how to eat this because I want to cut through the pork, but the toast is kind of hard to cut through, you know? I'm so I'm kind of just like it. doing what I can. That's what it looks like on the inside. That's what I wanted Ooh. to show. And now I'm just going to pick it up and take a bite. No one watches Mammoth Club for my delicate eating. So. <laughs> As if on cue. Here, hold on, hold on. There you go. Mm -hmm. This one's not my favorite, 
the meat itself is a little bit salty on the outside, like whatever the rub is. I also don't love the toast. It makes it harder to eat and it doesn't add any kind of flavor. It just makes it like an additional difficult part of eating it. So I'm actually just now cutting it up. Love the raclette cheese. Obviously, I really love the pickled peppers. I wish there were more of them to mix up the kind of, I don't wanna call it bland, cause it's certainly not bland, but kind of one note flavor of the rest of the dish. Um, the nuttiness of the cheese is great, but for me, this just doesn't unify as well as the steak sandwich. The steak sandwich I would definitely get again though. Speaking of unifying though, this is a unity of my two favorite beverages, cold brew coffee and an old fashioned. And in years past, this has been one of my festival faves. Let's try it again for science. I'm not gonna lie, I took some sips while you were picking up the other food. It's a little sweeter this year. Sweeter this, it's sweeter yeah. this year. I still like it because it's still coffee and an old fashioned, but it tastes like, I drink my iced coffee black and this tastes like that person, that it's iced coffee with syrup in it, which isn't my personal preference. You can still taste the alcohol. You can still taste that it would be an old fashioned and you can taste that it's cold brew, so it's not lying. It's just sweeter. Mm -hmm. It's just a little bit sweeter this year, which is a bummer um, as someone who doesn't like sweet drinks, but it's it's still delicious. And now for our duo of trios from Deco Delights, which is a beautifully decorated booth. It says it's inspired by the pastels of Miami Beach in the Gilded Jazz Age. We love that. That's a, that's very descriptive. I know. I, I like that that one got such a detailed description. The rest of them don't seem to have such... Anyway, that's not the point. This is the Neapolitan Dessert Trio. So you have a chocolate tart right there in the middle, a vanilla bean cheesecake, which I'm going to say is the blue thing, and then a strawberry mousse. Then we also grabbed the Neapolitan Beer Flight, which I think is really fun because it's a strawberry, a vanilla, and a chocolate beer. You've got a three dollar Brewing Strawberry Blonde Nitro right here, an 81 Bay Brewing Co. Vanilla Porter, and a Playa Linda Brewing Company Milk Stout. So that would be your chocolate. These are all Florida breweries, which we love. Can't wait to dig into our first sweet endeavor of the video. Double the Neapolitan, double the fun. I think we do a little mix and match situation. Yeah. What are you gonna start with? I like strawberry the best, so I'm starting with the strawberry mousse dessert. I'll do the chocolate. Sorry, I wanted to show the texture. Interesting. It's on a little a sponge. Shell. It's on a little sponge cake situation. Now let's see what we got here. Oh, whoa, that is. What am I dealing with here? My. That's gonna be McDonald's in your house, Richie Rich Rich. Cheers. Bing. Oh. Hmm. Mm. It's it's playing to the artificial side of strawberry a little bit. Like it's it's not quite sickly sweet, but it doesn't taste 100% like it was made out of real strawberries. Like there's some artificial flavoring, which I'm not loving, but I do like the consistency and I like how light the strawberry is. I think this might be one of the best chocolate desserts that I've had at Disney because it is not sickly sweet. You get to taste the chocolate and it's not like a mm. milk chocolate flavor. It actually tastes like darker chocolate, which is nice. So if you are a chocolate lover and you don't like a lot of the sweet milk chocolate, this might be right up your alley. The Cheesecake is awesome. I love the short, it's got a shortbread cookie as the crust instead of like a normal crust. Really creamy and dreamy. That one's my favorite. Well, I haven't even tried the chocolate, but I'm gonna claim it as my favorite anyway. <laughs> I think this is a fun dessert, regardless um, of not being in love with the strawberry because you get to try a little bit of everything. It's a really pretty dessert. So I would recommend this. Now I'm gonna wash it down with beer. This is fun. I'm gonna start with the strawberry, not shocking. I will start with the milk stout. Clean. Cheers. Oh! Oh! Wow, that's wild. I would drink a full one of these. Absolutely. It's a little bit heavier because it's a nitro blonde, but it's it's a blonde ale, which is one of my favorite kinds of beer behind um, kind of like a fruity IPA, but it reminds me of that. But it's thick with two C's because it's a nitro, but it's not hot today, so it doesn't matter. Slight hint of strawberry, not sickly sweet, less artificial tasting than <laughs> dessert. That is ridiculously smooth. That milk stout is almost surprisingly smooth in how it goes wow. down. It is a heavy beer, but it has it, it. It's very light on the tongue and light on the palate. There are a lot of seagulls who are wanting our, our food, but we are denying them access. That bird is so oh. brave. It's on the table next this to us. This isn't as vanilla-y as I want it to be. I mean, it's good. Oh, I like it. It's, it's good. It's, it's a little bit more 
acidic than the milk stout, I think, naturally, but it's just, I want more vanilla. I want a punch of vanilla. I do think that's a fun beer flight, though, the same way this is a fun dessert trio because you're trying some different things. I think it's a fun play on Neapolitan being three different beers. If I went back to get a just the strawberry, because any of these you like, uh, you can get just a, a regular size pour of. I'm glad that you like the strawberry. That is not my favorite, but I'm glad that you like it. Whilst enjoying our eats, we also got to enjoy some of the festival entertainment that happens here on the World Showcase Plaza stage. They have a rotating group of artists, and it could be acrobatic artists like Art Defying Gravity, which I could never. I, I am amazed that this woman is literally like flying through the air and I'm just, you know, working my way through a beer flight. Um, that we also got to enjoy uh, Dominic Gaudius, I'm gonna attempt at the last name, I'm sorry Dominic, who was playing some amazing music, that was really fun. He's got the didgeridoo going. And then sometimes you might see a live painting here. Very, very cool, make sure to check in the app because not every um, artist performs every day, but it's a fun addition to the festival to have some live entertainment in all forms of art right here. En route to our next spot in World Showcase and was gobsmacked by the cuteness of this print. We did not see this in Creation Shop. Oh my gosh. Do we need that? Uh, maybe it's Mickey and Minnie in their original Epcot outfit. I think I love that. It's so cute. Maria Stuckley, well done. Back in France, this time to enjoy some of the food and beverage. There's still the bowl of cheese, so I anticipate that's likely going to be what we get here. Am I mistaken? Okay. <laughs> Oh, look at a beverage. <laughs> Looked around for a table, couldn't find anything here in France, so you know what time it is. Trash can table time, it's trash can table time. Ooh la la. Nice. Thanks. Now, as predicted from L'Art de la Cuisine Francaise. That was much better than one I would try. <laughs> and we have picked up the creme de brie and petite panne, as well as the frozen French martini. As it appears, uh, this is a bowl of bread with cheese inside of it. So. Here we go. Yep. Mm. Mm. Really just attacking that bread bowl, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. It's so good. Listen, you do you. They freshly bake the bread for the bakery. That's what this is. It's a, it's a baguette style bread, but it's in a bread bowl form. And then it's filled with melty, gooey, warm brie cheese. What is not to love? Best of the fest. <laughs> And I'm gonna try a frozen French martini that has Grey Goose vodka, Chambord liqueur, pineapple, orange, and grape juices with a lemon lime foam. It's very delicate. Okay, there it is. I got all of the berry and the juices the first time around and very little of the foam. The foam adds a little bit of acidity and tartness to this that otherwise I think would be too sweet for me. Although I can understand the draw of these beverages, on a hot day in Florida. I mean, these frozen beverages are so popular in the France Pavilion, they have two that are offered year round. They are orange and lemon, uh, but they mix these up seasonally for the festivals. And this one, I mean, this is a this is a good frozen beverage. I think a lot of flavor of the juice coming through. You don't really taste the vodka. I could see this being a big draw on a summer day. It tastes 100% like a liquid Smarty. I would, yep, yep. I would, yes, or like a pixie stick. Yeah. It tastes like candy, it's, which it's is dangerous. Yeah, it's literally, oh yeah, because you just, it sneaks up on you. I think this has got to be the winner for the cutest booth award. The Vibrante in Vivido in Canto Cocina is just awesome. It has concept art from the film. It's got some great music playing. And I'm super excited about this chorizo and potato empanada with a turmeric aioli and a natto aioli. Now, for those of you who don't know what an anato is, we didn't either. So we looked it up and it is a tropical seed from the more tropical parts of the Americas and it is used to give an orange-red dye or color to whatever dish it's added to, which is what we see here as a part of the aioli. Now, the flavor is slightly peppery with a hint of nutmeg, so I'm looking forward to tasting that because that sounds very intriguing to me. Cheers. Gotta try to get everything in one bite. Is it sacrilege to go from the, to the middle? Oh, okay, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm getting yes from behind the camera. Here we go, cheers. Whoa. Oh. oh yeah, okay. Okay. Oh. Just take your glasses, good off. Oh yeah. Okay, 
There is a little bit of heat to it, although it's slight. It's gonna be more back of the throat heat. The flavor of the aiolis on top is a perfect blend with that turmeric being a little bit of like an earthy flavor and the annatto really having like a sweet, almost like sweet peppery flavor. Um, if you're used to like a Sichuan chili, that's the sort of description I'd give it to like how it feels on the tongue. Not as much numbing, but still really, really tasty. But the real winner is what's on the inside here, that potato and chorizo. It is hearty, spicy, very just, I'm struggling for words because this is just stellar, along with a crispy exterior. Best with us. 100%. We got distracted by more art and there's a lot of beautiful Disney Parks art and we saw a Mr. Toad piece and we're like, oh, I wonder if they have a postcard and we could get it for Max as like a little thing for his office. And we found the postcard, but it's a four pack of other attractions. How do you think Max would feel that Mr. Toad and Winnie the Pooh are sold together? Very strong, we should definitely get it. <laughs> like, do you think Winnie the Pooh did this? We'll have the, we'll have the highest of highs followed by the lowest of lows. They all just take the food one because I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's once a four pack like, is now a three. Like. <laughs> Headed into Morocco to look for some more chalk art. However, we will be skipping the Tangerine Cafe. They've mixed the menu up a little bit, but honestly, the biggest thing I'd recommend is the stone baked bread and the trio of dips because that was incredible. Abu, he's trying to steal the pot. Abu is a thief. That, you know what? That is accurate. Canonically accurate. Canonically true. Also, he's got the lamp, so he's made some good progress. Good for a boo. If you already have the lamp and the jewels, what does this pot do? We don't know what's in the pot. That's correct. You want me to check? I probably shouldn't reach there up there and do that. Like, there could be a million dollars in there. There could be... <laughs> yep, in that pot. There could be a, a, an IOU one hug note signed by Pedro Pascal dedicated to the first person that finds it. And we're sure that's something that a boo would want. I, who wouldn't? Uh-huh. Here we are in Japan and we have located Duffy and Gelatoni who have been making some uh, paw art paw painting. I don't know what the right way to say that outside of finger painting is, but the paw painting of Mickey. That's so cute. And here tucked away in the back entrance to Mitsukoshi, we have the octopus sushi chef from Monsters Incorporated. Oh, it looks like he cut himself in one of his tentacles. Is he serving himself? He's serving eyeballs that he's also eat. Uh, maybe? That would be weird. Huh. Once more, we have our influencer. Off in the distance, attempting to very carefully travel with a whole host of items in her hands, balancing her weapon of choice, the iPhone in her mandibles. And yet, she carries forward with such grace, causing to have no spillage whatsoever, arriving with out a singular issue. Amazing. Only years of practice might have set this influence up for success. And with enthusiasm, she reveals her other weapons of choice, a plastic fork and a recyclable napkin. Incredible. Once more, we are doing a fusion of eats. I have stopped by Goshiki in Japan and picked up the Wagyu bun and the sushi donut, mainly because that looks like a donut that Molly might enjoy. Maybe, sort of, kind of, possibly, perhaps. And Molly stopped by the- Artist table. Oh, the I artist went table. all the way to America and back to Japan. That quickly. Whoa. Incredible, it's you incredible. You know, when we did that before, it was a 14 hour flight. Both ways, but not here at Epcot. Magic is real. Um, I picked up the hummingbird cake and the beer flight. I'm going to start by sampling the sushi donut. This is donut shaped sushi featuring salmon, tuna, shrimp, cucumber, and sesame seed over a decorated plate of wasabi aioli, sriracha aioli, and an eel sauce. Now, just as a little bit of a point of fact, sushi does not refer to any of the raw fish or meats that might be placed on a roll. Sushi actually refers to the style of preparation of the rice, which is why it is a sushi donut. We're gonna go fish by fish here. I'm not into a combination situation here for my sushi donut. We're going to take the tuna, dip it in our aioli. Yeah, that's good sushi. Certainly good sushi when you think about it coming from a cart at a festival. This is just a really fun dish. I think if you enjoy sushi, this is just a neat way to enjoy a variety of it. And which one's the shrimp? Uh, right here. You're gonna
Don't worry about it. I'm just gonna look away. We have assembled the shrimp bite. Oh, you're going to all the, for all the aiolis, okay. It's a lot of shrimp. It's the best donut I've ever had. Whoa, now that's a glowing review. It's really good. <laughs> the fish is fresh, very tasty, and a fun twist on sushi. I dig it. Mm -hmm. And excited to try the new Wagyu bun. It's a steamed bun filled with American Wagyu beef and a green sisho sauce. I'm very excited to try this. Love the Wagyu beef and uh, a bao bun. I mean, it sounds like a perfect situation. We shall see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, easy, best of the fest. Two, two, four thumbs up amongst this group. That is fantastic. It's like the Japanese version of a cheeseburger pod. It is so flavorful. The meat is nice and tender. You've got this soft bao bun. You've got a little bit of pepper flavor from the sauce, but it's not super hot or anything. It's just adding a nice earthy flavor to the dish. It's really fresh, warm. This is fantastic. Also, in our Disney Dining Plan video, which came out very recently, this vessel hadn't started yet, so we had not gotten confirmation on if you could use your Dining Plan snack credits towards festival food, and we have confirmed with the cast members that you can. You're gonna see that purple icon on the different menus, but keep in mind, a few things we've asked about haven't actually been on the Dining Plan and they were misprinted and things, so the best thing to do is ask the cast members if you wanna use a snack credit, but for example, that bao bun was nine something, the bread bowl in France was nine something, so if you're on the Dining Plan, using your snack credits for these higher price snacks is a very good use of a credit. But <laughs> From the artist table in the American Adventure, I am going to try the hummingbird cake. It is banana and pecan cake dipped in cream cheese icing with caramel sauce and a warm pineapple compote. Now, I should also note that the duck and dumplings from the artist table are very tasty. We had them last year, but wanted to try something new. I am very excited for this. Oh, wow, that's dense. Oh, my goodness. Look at the inside of that. Okay. She's thick. No, she, she is thick. Two C's. I want to get a little bit of everything here. Some of that, some of that caramel, pineapple compote. This is a big bite. Sorry, not sorry. Okay. Now, I was concerned that this was going to be too sweet. I think if you are not a very sweet person, maybe avoid the caramel. But the cream cheese icing is a really nice counterpoint that's very light to the incredibly dense and moist cake. Wow. Listen, this is a beautiful combination of a lot of my childhood, like pineapple upside down cakes, bananas, caramel, pecans, cream cheese icing. It might be nostalgia speaking, but this is the best dessert I've had so far. Go on on my best of the fest, easy. Wow. All right, friends, put those seats and tray tables in the full upright and locked position because we are about to take flight. We have a flight, again, from the artist table, and it is like a fruity-inspired flight. So this one right here is the Wicked Weed Pineapple Daydream IPA. In the middle here, you've got the Brew Hub Jazzberry Wheat Jam Ale. Jazzberry, I think I was pronouncing that wrong. And uh, last but not least, you've got the Lost Coast Brewery Peanut Butter Chocolate Milk Stout. So a lot of flavors going on and excited to try all of these. They sounded really unique. I will be starting with the Y'all's Berries. Oh, I will be starting with the Lost Crispy Peanut Butter Chocolate Milk Stout. Cheers. Boop. That is a stout. Yazberries taste like blueberries. Yazberries? Yeah, Jazzberries. <laughs> I could forget what the real name is. It tastes like a blueberry ale. I really like it. It's a, blue, it's a Jazzberry Wheat Jam Ale, and it does taste like a blueberry wheat beer. Light blueberry berry flavor, not super sweet, not artificial sweet, would be great on a hot day. The peanut butter chocolate milk stout is just that. It is a stout, so it's a heavier beer, a little bit heavier on the palate too, and you get the strong notes of chocolate and peanut butter throughout. I think if you're a stout enjoyer, you will really, really like this. That Wicked Weed Pineapple Daydream IPA though. How do I say this on this channel? Um, Wicked Weed. Yeah. Uh, pineapple IPA. Yeah, it is. There is a distinct flavor of uh, hemp. Plants. Yeah. Uh, I think it's very hoppy, very um, green plant forward. If you like very hoppy, strong uh, hop and green plant flavors, 
Cheech and Chong would like it. Bob Marley might like it. Huh. That tastes like a set cookie, a nutter butter. Oh, yes, nutter butter in liquid form. Yeah, uh, for me, it goes Yasberry one, peanut butter two, uh, plants three. Uh, it goes, oh, for me, it goes the Pineapple Daydream IPA, Whoa. the Yasberry 2, Milk Stout 3. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that I like IPAs and it's a very hop forward IPA. I feel like I'm being wrongfully incriminated <laughs> like right now. <laughs> hey, man, be cool. Be cool. Continuing on our trek around the world for this Festival of the Arts, and once more, we are going to be skipping the funnel cake stand because I know it's an unpopular opinion, but I don't like funnel cake. I think funnel cake is trash. This year they have introduced a new funnel cake, however it is a crazy chocolate funnel cake sandwich, which just from its description sounds a little bit like an artificial flavored nightmare. So I feel confident in my decision skipping the stand. But if you like it, then I hope you love it. Agreed. I'm not here to yuck your yums. What we will stop to chat about, though, are the adventures and art you can have in the American Gardens Theater, which is the main theater here in the American Adventure Pavilion. There are two things for the Festival of the Arts happening. In the daytime, usually around lunchtime, make sure to check the app. They have the Animation Academy, where a Disney artist will teach you how to draw a character very, very similar to if you've been to the animation experience at Conservation Station in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Uh, when I was here earlier picking up our food, they had somebody teaching guests how to draw Jack-Jack from the Incredible. So the character is going to vary by day. The artist is going to vary by day. Free activity doesn't tend to fill up because this is a pretty big theater. Lots and lots of fun. Another fun free art, hands-on art experience you can do at this festival. The other thing that happens here, I absolutely love this. It's the Disney on Broadway concert series. So, so similarly to how they have the Candlelight Processional with celebrity narrators for the Festival of the Holidays or the um, Eat to the Beat concert series for food and wine, this festival they are celebrating performing art. So they have stars of Disney Broadway shows like Frozen and The Little Mermaid and Mary Poppins, Beauty and the Beast, Lion King, Newsies. They have them come perform live and it's really fun. Artists don't necessarily only sing songs from whatever play they are famous from. They incorporate a lot of different Disney live music and it's so stunning. It's a great way to, if you're into Broadway, see a potentially favorite Broadway star. If you're not into Broadway, it's a good like gateway to get you into it. I absolutely love it. There is a dining package you can do if there's a star that you are particularly excited about, you can reserve that in advance and then have reserved seating. They also are doing the quick service, first come first serve dining package over at Regal Eagle. So if you don't wanna pay the cost to eat at like Beer Garden or Coral Reef, you can always check that too. But again, first come first serve. But this is a do not miss for me when I'm at this festival. found some cute chalk characters in America, helped Washington cross the Delaware, and now we're making our way through Italy. Mostly to look for characters. We're definitely gonna be skipping the food. Italy does have a an adequate and cute dish returning this year. It's a fried mozzarella cheese with a rainbow of sauces. I tried it last year and it was fun and cute, but one, it could kill Alan because one of the sauces is pesto, and two, since it wasn't anything extraordinary, we're gonna save those dollars for something else. However, we have found this very cute Luca chalk art, complete with the kitty. I love it. And I- the crab down there. Oh, the crab, I didn't even see him. It is at this time that I would like to give you an allergy PSA that if you do have a worry or a concern about something that is going to be served to you in one of the dishes you would like to eat, always ask the cast at those booths so that they may call the chefs and check. There is a helpful allergy guide in the My Disney Experience app that you can look in the festival guide that has some allergen information, but some of those menus say to ask at the booth. So make sure to do that. Look how cute this art is right next to Italy. This like retro 50s Mickey and Minnie. I'm obsessed. It wouldn't be an Epcot festival if I didn't highlight that the little German pavilion train family is also celebrating the Festival of the Arts. That woman, too much celebrating. She had a few too many of the rosé cocktails. Let her be a warning tale, children. That's a cautionary tale. Uh, but everybody else is having a nice time. Except for that guy, who's literally headfirst into a wine barrel. 
So, good for him. Spotted a few sneaky Pascals, my personal favorite being the one grabbing some caramel corn, cause same. And then we grabbed some things from the Pastoral Palette, which is the kitchen in Germany. We've got the beef short rib, as well as the play on rosé flight. First up, this is a red wine braised beef short rib. It's served with a parsnip puree, broccolini, baby tomatoes, and a balsamic glaze. We must keep dancing so that we might be warm. It is so cold. It's beautiful out, like wet, like it's not raining and it's sunny, but it's like in the 40s. I am so cold. Is that an indication of how good the short rib is? Nope. Just, just to, to dance? I like the jaunty music and I'm freezing. It's fine. It is uh, a little dry. You can actually kind of see that with the meat. I like the red wine sauce. I really like the parsnip puree. It's nice and creamy and dreamy. Do I wish it was a mashed potato? Yeah, I, miss mo I wish most things were mashed potatoes. Um, and the balsamic is good, but we've had some really excellent beef dishes, Japan and uh, Craftsman Courtyard. So I would skip this one next time. Next, we will be enjoying the Play on Rosé flight with Three Daughters Brewing Rosé Hard Cider, 81 Bay Brewing Rosé Blonde Ale, and a Frosé, or Frozen Rosé. Normally, this is one of my favorite festival drinks because I like Rosé and I like the presentation. Normally, it's not 40 degrees and Frosé sounds amazing, but let's get into it. Rock, paper, scissors, who has to drink the Frosé? Ready? Yeah. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Boop, that's you. Okay. <laughs> I'll have the beer. <laughs> I thought if I could like spring it on you, I might win one. Ugh. I mean, it's delicious. Don't get me wrong. It's just cold right now. So that loses some of its luster, but it's it's not super sweet. It's a drier rosé. If it's a hotter day, it's really refreshing. I really do like the rosé. And like any of the flights anywhere, you can get a full size of any of these cocktails. The rosé brew is very nice. It's very light notes of rosé and it's caramely outside of that so it has that crisp rosé flavor while having some nice caramely notes afterwards. Really, good. really, really, really flavorful. Ooh, that beer individually might be my best of the fest beer we've had so far. That cider tastes more like a bubbly rosé, like a champagne style cider. That actually might be one of the better ciders Ooh. I've ever had. Yeah, that's fantastic too. Normally cider or oftentimes cider is really, really sweet because it's usually fruity, but that's dry, it's crisp. This flight, best of the best. Yeah. Yeah. Breeze and Past Refreshment Outpost, which doesn't appear to have any festival food, although they do have some unique beer offerings. However, I'm looking for some eats. We're still balling on a budget. I'm also silently protesting the fact that they used to have chalk art of the hyenas from the Lion King here, and I don't see them anymore. And that is lack of hyena representation, and I will not stand for it. We don't have hyena slander in this house. No hyena slander. Made it into China and picked up our food from the Painted Panda. And uh, it's a special time of the day, because it's Alan table time, it's Alan table time. Bup ba da I'm a table. We, we couldn't find a table, and the, the trash can right there is in a high traffic area, so we got an Alan table. Also, we found the different characters in China. You can find some characters from Mulan, including little brother, her dog, and Mushu, and Cricky, and they're very cute. Mulan's one of my favorite Disney movies. Cricky was very angry, though. Wouldn't you be if Mushu clearly exploded part of the wall and blamed you? 100%. Not allegedly. Allegedly. All right, ready to dig in here. Again, these are the General So chicken shumai, which are basically little percets of General So's chicken sitting abed a cucumber. So I'm very excited because I love General So's chicken. I hope it's spicy. All right, not really sure how we approach this, but this is the way of the road. Maybe we don't do everything at once. Here, I'll help you. Oh, you're gonna have the cucumber? <laughs> Thanks. So I wouldn't say it's spicy. I would say it's peppery. The general so mostly comes from the glaze on top. Less from what I think you'd anticipate from a general so's chicken. Uh, when you have like a, a pan fried dish after the chicken itself has been fried. You've got a dumpling dough that's on the exterior. It looks a bit of like a volcano, actually. I think it's okay. I think with the cucumber added, it's a nice little bit of vegetable and freshness and brightness to the dish. But um, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'd go back for these. 
breeze through Norway where we saw a sneaky little fiery salamander and some snow geese. And now we're cruising through Mexico where I've got my eye out. Yep, there he is for a certain Alabrije spirit dog. You can actually see Dante in his regular dog form as well. I think this is one of my favorite of the Chot characters. And then we are headed to what is hopefully going to be an amazing booth, El Artista Ambriente. Side note, look how fun the book is. I was just flipping through it and it's got like coloring pages and activities. Even if you're not doing a bunch of festival stuff, grab one of these for a little free souvenir. Entertain yourself. That's great. Anyway, time for El Artista Ambriente, which is the Mexico booth. We have the Tostada de Langosta, which is a lobster tostada, as well as the carne asada. First up, we have the Tostada de Langosta, which is chilled lobster with a chipotle aioli, onions, and mango on a fried corn tortilla with guacamole, shredded cabbage, and hot sauce. And I just want to say, this is a hefty amount of lobster for a festival dish at first glance. I'm not sure how to, how to navigate this. I'm just going to bite into it. Okay, to start, you don't get a lot of that really heavy sea flavor from the lobster. It's there, but it's almost like somebody's just sort of lightly sprinkled that flavor throughout where the lobster is in this breakdown. What I get mostly is the really light and fresh mango and red onion and hot sauce with that guacamole and lime underneath. And I think it's a really, really refreshing combination. Honestly, surprised me. I'm normally not a lobster or a seafood guy, but this is pretty darn tasty in how it's built and integrated. The only thing that I would add is maybe the tostada could be just a touch fresher, but I mean, even it had great crunch even still. I think this is a pretty darn good dish. And taking a look at the carne asada, it is chipotle marinated beef sirloin with a grilled piece of queso fresco, which I'm really excited about, a napole salad with queso fresco foam and chicharron dust. That steak is cutting pretty nice. Oh, I'm gonna get some of this face queso fresco little sauce here with the chicharron, and I'm really excited about this grilled, griddled cheese, which is kind of hard to cut, but making it happen. Well done. All right, get all of that. All right. I'm not familiar with this vegetable, so I'm just gonna try it. Oh my goodness, it's a pepper and it is delicious. I think this is going on my best of the fest because I like that it's different, but it's still classic flavors that I really enjoy. It's simple deliciousness because you've got really well cooked steak. It's a little, I'd call it medium, I guess. Cutting really easy, a nice cut of meat. You've got this little uh, zesty crunch from the chicharrones right here. I love the griddled cheese. If anything, I would like more of the griddled cheese and maybe it'd be slightly less griddled. And then I'm really liking this pepper salad. So a unique dish, no nuts. As an update, I did a quick Google search to find out that Napolis is cactus. And I was today years old when I found out I liked cactus. It tastes like a pepper. So thank you to Mexico for introducing me to a new food. The festival Lord himself, Figment is beckoning us to his inspiration station, which is our last official stop on our tour around the world in Festival of the Arts. Now folks, I have something to tell you. We picked up the blueberry filled pastry tart with purple icing, which definitely is not a pop tart. And if it had just been this, we would have been under budget. But by the decree of our Festival Lord Figment, we just had to pick up the rainbow flights. What are we gonna come to Festival of the Arts and not drink the rainbow? I mean, who are we? Ridiculous. Come on. Ridiculous. <laughs> So in total, we went over budget by $18. Figment made us do it. That mischievous little guy. Dragon. He was like sitting on my shoulder like, Psst, drink the rainbow. And I was like, Figment, no, the budget. And he was like, forget the budget. Treat and then, yourself. And then a moon appeared. And I was like, I got to get out of here. And then we just ran, but we didn't spill anything because that would have been bad. We just didn't film it. But believe us, it happened. Yeah, it was there. <coughs> Good job. Back inside, now that we got our pretty photos of the drinks outside, and I just love how they transformed the Odyssey building 
recently for different festival booths. Of course, it is all Figment themed in here. And if you're a fan of the original attraction, you need to come in here because some of the artwork that's kind of being projected around that'll pop up, like Figment over there, that's from the original attraction. That Figment wearing a very jaunty beret up there is from the original attraction. They're playing OG old school Epcot music. So it's really, really fun in here. And I also just noticed they've got some activities in here. These you do have to pay extra, but they've got sandbox art, spin art, and they've got these name works that are really cool where they can do like your favorite characters into your name. We actually got one of these one year. So some more cool stuff to look at while you're inside. This is also where you are gonna get this year's hottest item, the Imagination Pavilion popcorn bucket, which I have to admit is actually really, really cool. It's the building itself. And since it's clear pyramid, you can see Figment inside with the rainbow. It's on mobile order. So it's super duper easy. They've got plenty of stock. No need to wait in line for several hours. It's $30, um, but you're gonna pick that up in here. All right, first up, the definitely not a Pop-Tart. This was our last stamp on the uh, wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. Cheers. I mean, it's delicious. They improved it from last year. The crust is really flaky, buttery, and delicious. I like the berry filling. It's a shortbread, right? I mean, it's a shortbread cookie with blueberry filling. The icing on top is fine. I think this is good. I think it's cute. They also have a grape smoothie and a rainbow cake, both that come topped with freeze-dried Skittles, which are really cool. We had those last year. A little too artificial medicinal flavor for the smoothie for my taste. And the cake is really cute, but just cake. Not anything super exciting flavor-wise, but good for little ones or if you want a cute dessert. And now the rainbows. So. Starting over here for the Roy part of Roy G. Biv, you have the Rainbow Hard Cider Flight. So you have a Three Daughters Brewing Black Cherry Hard Cider, a Three Daughters Brewing Blood Orange Hard Cider, and a Three Daughters Brewing Passion Fruit Hard Cider. And then over here for the Biv, you've got 81 Bay Brewing Co. Green with Envy Blondale, 81 Bay Brewing Co. Blue Butterfly Lager, hopefully no real butterflies, but only time will tell, and Urban Artifact, the Gadget, Raspberry, and Blackberry Midwest Fruit Tart. But you're starting with the beers. Yeah, I figured we just do like it across this way. Okay, I'll do the butterfly. We're just ruining the rainbow. Yeah, you do You do Roy, and I do Jibuv. Oh. And then, we, then I switch and do Roy. I'll do the sweet things. Cheers. Black cherry. Green with Indy Blondale. It's a little medicinal for me, if I'm being yeah. honest. It's too artificial sweet. Cherry's not my, yeah. my go-to flavor. You tried the green with him and blonde. I mean, that is a, whoa. Mm. That is a standard blonde ale. I think it's, I, I mean, it's pretty tasty. Notes of like, light notes of hay and caramel. Very tasty. But like good hay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just sort of describing Like if you were taste. a horse, it'd be the good stuff. It'd be alfalfa. Okay, horse girl. <laughs> okay, rain it in. <laughs> See what I did there? See what I did there? Nice. Beep. This is the blue butterfly lager. Mine is blood orange hard cider and it tastes like Fanta. This is super malt forward. I'm talking like Werther's original caramel. Oh yeah, probably not real butterflies. No. Mm. This is a Fanta. Yeah, I'm not convinced that it's not, it's not Fanta. It's a Fanta. And now the fruit tart. Passion fruit. This is the best cider. It's the least artificial tasting. It's also the least sweet. It's still not something I'm personally gonna drink. This whole cider flight is not my cup of tea, um, but it's fun. So, and if you like sweeter drinks, you will like the cider flight. This is my favorite beer on the flight. Raspberry and blackberry fruit tart. I love sour beers and that's really, really good. Mm, Very tart, yeah. a little pucker power, but Generally, just a very tasty fruit forward beverage. Overall, this whole thing is really fun. It's really gimmicky, and Ooh. you know, we fell for it just like a lot of people. But I'm sorry, no, no, no. <laughs> Festival Lord Figment yeah. made us convinced us to try this. That's true. We didn't do this, we were powerless. He's literally in the back of us right now, staring over our shoulder. Up there. So. You try saying no to those eyes. We have successfully eaten our way around the Festival of the Arts, so without further ado, it is time for Best of the Fest. Oh. 
You're up first. Actually, we're going to do worst of the fest first because I like to end on the high note. That's, that's you know? correct. That's correct. So these are the things that maybe we would each not order again. For me, it was the pork belly dish at the Craftsman Courtyard. It was just a little bit salty. It didn't work together, and we ate much better meat dishes around the festival. And for me, it was the red wine braised beef from Pastoral Palette. The meat was very dry. The parsnip puree was a bit bland. And the broccolini, limp. Yeah. But you know what? Not everything can be winners, but some things are. So here are our true best of the fests. For me, my best of the fest are the beef wellington from Cuisine Classique, the steak sandwich from Craftsman Courtyard, the hummingbird cake from the artist's table, the chorizo and potato empanada from Vibrante y Vivido, and the beer flight we had from the artist's table as well. Really America showing out for me Proud this of them. year. Proud, Proud of, them. of them. That's a first. All right, what are yours? Uh, I love the pimento, bacon, and fried green tomato grilled cheese and tomato soup from Pop Eats. The hot bowl of cheese from La Arte de Cuisine Francaise, who's surprised by that. Not me. The Wagyu bao bun from Goshiki in Japan. The carne asada from El Artista Ambriente in Mexico. And the play on rosé flight from Pastoral Palette in Germany. <sighs> Lots of cheese. Lots of cheese for you. Lots of meat and cheese, which is my favorite. But you know what? O overall, a pretty good festival selection. We've got one more thing to grab, though. We completed our wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. So let's go get a colorful treat. You know, I have room for that. Mm -hmm. Dessert's another stomach. Mm -hmm. Spotted some more really cool art on our way. I love this series that is like movie posters, but they're kind of dark and gothic with the different castles. And also these all with Mickey, where it looks like postcards or advertisements for national parks. They were done by Brett Iwen, who's the voice of Mickey Mouse. So that's really cool. Just stopped back by Deco Delights to pick up our redemption for the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine, which is a berry smoothie and a painter's palette cookie, both of which cannot be bought and can only be obtained by completing the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. My gosh, that's a mouthful. I love that Ludwig von Drake is the mascot. Ah, Ludwig von Drake! <laughs> red, yellow, green, red, blue, blue, blue. Saving the cookie, and I do like that they put it in a sealed bag so you can save it for later, but trying the smoothie, and the cup is very cute. A little souvenir cup. It's not bad. It's, I mean, it's a berry smoothie. It's nothing super exciting, but the cup is cute. I think this is not my favorite of the crawls. That's obviously the cheese crawl or the cookie crawl. Um, but if you're gonna try these foods anyway, Cute little take home, nothing wrong with that. Night has fallen at the cot and we are headed into the new gardens to enjoy the beacon of magic. This is the light effect on Spaceship Earth and they do a couple of different little light shows every night. And we've seen it from the front, it's very cool, but it's really cool when you go into the new gardens with the new light fixtures on the ground and these poles here. So they're gonna do a couple of these little light shows throughout the evening uh, and they add in a seasonal one for the different festivals and the Festival of the Arts one is Rainbow Connection with the Muppets, which is a perfect way to end the day. The garden is so cool to watch these shows. The first one we saw was a little figment show, which was very fun, all figmenty colors and listening to one little spark. And now I'm hoping the Muppets one is next because I'm very cold. But they happen every five minutes or so. And they're very fun. Those shows are so, so cool in the gardens with the light columns and the ground lighting up too. It's still no sparkle pixie dust tile, but uh, it, they're really cool. So if you can catch them from here, it's an even cooler view. And um, they were back to back, Figma and, and Kermit, and we need more Kermit. We do need more Kermit representation. I love a Muppet moment. Me too.
Well, that wraps a wonderful few days here at Festival of the Arts. Besides the food, which is obviously a festival fave, what's your favorite thing about this festival? Oh gosh, I love seeing all the different art that's prepared by the different artists around the festival. I think that's so cool. Having bought a couple of prints myself just now, uh, <laughs> I just think it's a really nice way to show a lot of the talented folks and what they do and, and all of their hard work. I really do love that Broadway series and Spaceship Earth lighting up, but I really think my favorite are the chalk characters that are hidden around the pavilions. It's a fun kind of little scavenger hunt and they're just really cute. But that brings us to an end of our time at Festival of the Arts. Folks, be sure to like this video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, and if you want to join with the ManFam in conversation about this or any of our other videos, Join us on Discord. The links for all that are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been magical. And very colorful. Very, yes, very colorful. Sorry. <laughs> wow. That stung. <laughs> <laughs>